Hello and welcome back to Take a Sip Podcast. I'm Lecce. And I'm Tito. All right, Tito. Since it's been a while, I felt like, I don't know why it feels like I've, uh, I haven't done an intro in a bit and it's only been two weeks, dude. I, I know. It's been, a, it's been a long week, bro. It, it feels like that too. Uh, when, when, like, I, when I start the episodes, it feels like yeah, that. <laughs> dude, fuck. Um, but what are you drinking, dude? I am drinking a local beer from Night Shift Brewery nice. called Everwise. So it is a sour beer. I love sour beers. Of course it is. And this one <laughs> is strawberry, kiwis, and hibiscus. Ooh, sounds good, actually. That doesn't sound yeah. so bad. Yeah. Uh, that brewery in particular, I don't know what it is. Maybe because it's an IPA for sure. Um, a little strong. For a beer, you get what I they, mean. Yeah, that, that's a that's a lot of their beers. Like, there's one, one of their, one of their beers is very, very, very like hoppy. The hops mm, that, that yeah, the made, hops is very use, high. Yeah, but that's on purpose. You got me. Some people actually yeah. like like hoppy that. Drink. Yeah, that hoppy drink. But they yeah. they have some good ones. They have some very nice um. Like lighter beers, like lagers. I lagers, think yeah. Yeah. I know um, I know they do, but I don't think I've tried one of their lighter beers for sure. Yeah. Um, another good brewery, if you are like in the Boston area, I would uh suggest Jack's Abbey's. Jack Abbey's, yeah. Jack Those Abbey's good too. They have Those a lot of good ones. I actually took a tour of the brewery when I worked at the restaurant. Really yeah. good place. And if you do sit down to eat there, because they do have like a little eating type of eating. area uh, mm-hmm. a lot of good food as well mm. yep so uh <laughs> what about you what are you drinking i'm drinking i don't know why i wasn't feeling up to drinking alcohol today man um so i'm just drinking an iced coffee for now Iced coffee either way i, I was I'm not gonna lie kind of lazy to make a drink too because i could have uh, made easily a drink any drink yeah i was just feeling lazy dude today. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, i gotcha yeah we got some good fucking news, bro. Honestly, some hype news for both of our ends. You got me. Oh yeah, a hundred. So it's like video game and fucking movie wise and stuff like that. So it's like it's a crazy week. Yes. So, and hopefully you right? guys find these these uh, articles and trailers that we talk about very interesting as well. I know. I mean, a bunch of these things have been popular over the past few years. Very popular over the past few years. So. I'm, I have no doubt in my head that this is going to be a boring episode in any way. Shape yeah, it's form. definitely not a boring episode for sure. Or at least for us, it's not <laughs> definitely not going to be in that aspect. Because this is definitely fucking hyped all the round, dude, with all this stuff. Yeah. The fucking great news and stuff. Yeah, I know this is like all good news, dude. There's like no bad news. There here. really isn't here. Yeah. So, like nothing's like nothing went wrong this week. Thank fuck. <laughs> 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 But starting off with a, a good fucking news for the Rockstar fans out there, bro. So Rockstar actually, I think this was from last week. They announced or teased that they're actually starting to work and developing GTA 6, man. So finally, dude, after fucking over a decade of having GTA 5, yes. or about to be a decade, I think. I think Next we have reached decade. it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they teased that... Um, that they're starting to work and putting their hands on making and creating a GTA six. Yeah. Just fucking crazy news, man. See, it's funny seeing this article because this article literally came out minutes after we finished recording and I quickly edited the episode and posted it up. This article pops up. Yeah. That was on <laughs> dude. I was like, God damn it, dude. Literally if they, if they did it earlier, man, I was, I was thinking, I was like, should I call Leche and be like, do we do a bonus episode right now? A quick bonus like a, thing? Like a quick 15 minute thing, just not yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. funny too, because literally last week we kind of spoke about this on like the the age of, or last week or two, three like two weeks, weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of episodes back. Yeah. yeah. Where how some games like have been update after update and very consistent on being kept up like where do you go when you put so much time and effort um into these types of games you got me and i get it that some develop um 
game developers and uh, a lot of these types of businesses have their different views and opinions on what they do with these long-term games that they set so much time, money, and energy into. Yeah. But it also just proves like the game has been and is still so popular that <laughs> let's move forward. Like, yes, we did this, but we could start something new, make it even better from the start and still push forward. You got me? And that's, I that's think, technically what they're doing right here with Rockstar yeah. and GTA six. No, a hundred percent dude. The thing is GTA five is the only game I think in history now as of recording this in 2022 that has been in three gaming generations, dude. Yep. It's mm-hmm. been on literally Xbox 360, Xbox one in the, in the Xbox series. Yeah. And then same thing, PS3, PS4, and now PS5. Mm-hmm. And of course, PC, whatever, you know, yeah. on that end. PC doesn't change either way. Yeah. Exactly. But that's crazy, dude, to even fucking comprehend that a game is, has fucking lasted that long. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, if we look at it too, I mean, technically, Destiny is on the verge of being in three generations as well. Well, I mean, does, well, I mean, it technically the, the entire thing of Destiny, yes, but Destiny one, you know, I well, that, think it's just two different things. You know what I mean, well, yeah, okay, exactly. Um, but this is like what I'm also talking about. Like, we don't know where Sony Bungie now <laughs> is thinking of the feud of pushing Destiny because yeah. it has been a game. <laughs> even since its original beginnings that has been, has had a very loyal and hard headed uh, following Mm -hmm. of, of players and stuff that um, it's like, where do we go from here? Do we continue destiny two? do we push for a destiny three or do they just keep the destiny name and drop the two and they just build off of destiny? I mean, technically like, A World League of, of Legends Warcraft. have a group, yeah, like a WoW, a League, and like other just games do like expansions that. Like, pretty much consistently. Exactly. I mean, that's what Destiny 2 is on the verge of. And I don't think GTA is going to be like that. I don't think so. I think they're rebuilding a new game entirely. 100%. One, they're rebuilding, in my opinion. The only reason why they're doing that is because they're dropping two gens behind. Yes. You get me? This is going to be for the new gen, 100%, dude. Oh, 100%. I think, they were, yeah. I think that's what they were waiting for. They're waiting for ups- this ups- substantial increase of like the actual like capacity that systems could hold. Yes. And then like they're like, fuck it, now technology, we have this, we could actually do all this HD stuff for this game. Yeah. So we're just going to fucking go ham, you know, yeah, they're going to go in on it. Because normally a big game like this, I mean, even Destiny, Destiny before it did a three work was just about the same capacity of gigabytes for uh what you needed like on your console which was like uh, probably over 20 30 gigabytes um which tech which uh gta still is with the whole rework that destiny just did they're down to like 10 and they have a whole like format of like switching in and out of campaigns and what they're doing which we're gonna touch on like in in a few minutes here but but yeah, it, and even with GTA having such a big game, and we've seen the new type of like game development uh, software that they're using for, especially like when your whole storyline is sub reality. You get me? Like, yeah. Like, this like, is stuff you wish them. and kind of can put yourself into doing because it is so connected with reality. Driving the car, shooting the guns, seeing the blood on the people. They were definitely waiting for Unreal Engine 5 to come out, bro. That's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was. I, I wanted like, to say what, Unreal. It just uh, wouldn't come to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely think this is going to be, I think, I mean, fuck, to even say they're going to top GTA 5 on the sales and stuff mm-hmm. it's gonna be fucking enormous this game if it comes out like it's not gonna like this is just the news right or mm-hmm. like we probably won't even see this game until fucking 2027 you know like five years down the line from now unfortunately because a game that massive that exclusive is definitely gonna take fucking years of development time yes 
Oh, oh 100%. Song, it was the same thing when G, with uh, GTA 5. Like, we heard the announcement years before we even saw, like, the actual game, any like sort trailer of trailer or, or spoofs come out of it. You get me? Yeah. So, yeah, th- yeah, it's definitely hype. And with, like you said, the amount of years that comes with making this type of game, it hopefully gets us out of this pandemic and still get people out there to buy these new um consoles to to be able to access gta 6 when it does come out you get me yeah for real because yeah. like we've said a couple of times the shortage on these consoles is just ridiculous and resellers aren't helping yeah, uh, the, the gaming community but toxic to like <laughs> the human like to humanity i swear <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately but but yeah it's definitely cool and i definitely want to see like how the story progresses are they gonna start a new character that we follow his oh, storyline no. will he interact with the, with the main guys that we have now you got me or or they could literally pull some crazy bullshit out their ass and mm-hmm. they just add an entirely new section to gta 5 entirely Exactly. Like we don't know if we're still gonna. We don't know if we're gonna be in Los Santos still, or they bring in a whole new area. Like we don't know. Yeah. Do we head to Vegas next, where you can drive down the the the? I mean, if you think Los Santos (laughs) is Los Angeles, what city is bigger than Los Angeles, right? Exactly. New York City, in my opinion, would probably be. A big is it bigger than Los Angeles? But it's not even. It's not even. Be a the whole size capacity, you point. get me? It's going to be a whole state worthy of fucking, you know, map exactly. The but map like, is going to be way bigger. Mm-hmm. But like I'm saying, like, it's not even it's not even the replication of the size of a city. It's the replication of the likeliness of a city. You get me? Because when you're in Los Santos, you could say, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, I know what this is trying to be. I know what this is trying to be. It's the spoofs of everything. Exactly. Like you can't just drop that in the middle of Wisconsin and expect somebody to know what city you're in. Yeah. It's not really big. Exactly. It has to be a big city. Like it has to be like a major city or it could be like an international city. Exactly. Like it doesn't, we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like it doesn't have to be local. It doesn't have to be, a big area it's something where you can replicate things for someone to be like i recognize this landmark like you said new york new york yeah it's kind of small but when you're in central square you know you're in central square same thing with boston you can look at the tobin bridge and be like i'm in boston yeah straight up exactly so that's our thing same thing with san francisco the bridges you could do that in tokyo because they have so many specific areas where it's just bright lights and specific things you see that over there like in the gates and all that stuff so this is you know i guess we're putting our tinfoil hat in that moment right like what are they gonna do right so my my guess is we're not only getting one one city, you get me? Oh, like, we have Los Angeles. Like mm-hmm. we're not getting one place like this. I think they're gonna go big, dude. I think not even two places. I think we're getting three different elements, pretty much. Three fucking enormous ass cities, probably. Probably. And they're like, and they're gonna be like little cutscenes or load screens, right, to go mm-hmm. into in, in between each major city. I think. Because probably. that's the only thing that I'm thinking next that GTA would do, right? The whole yeah, that, that crime seems is like, like the, you fucking doing crime and shit, right? Yeah, that's the like lo- international crime. That's the only thing missing in this game at this point. <laughs> it's the next logical step, and even still, then like actually finding out like the laws and what they consider, but uh, crimes in these other places is really. Well, I mean, most likely it's gonna be the general crimes, right? Like you know, fucking killing people and shit, still <laughs> like, running I'm, over people with cars and stuff. Still, but I'm saying like there's gonna be a lot of research and development that goes into that's this. what i'm saying if they're more than normal this, more no than of normal. course they're, they're man i mean they fucking made billions selling gta gta 5 the first time i doubt yeah like, they got expenditures right now so they're oh, good bro. they're chilling on money there's yeah, no they, and with, they could and afford with, to make it big and with the many what is it the in game like uh oh, the microtransactions, microtransactions yeah you know people are 
dumping money to buy the new car, the new accessories as it comes yeah, out instead of actually whales doing of jobs. <laughs> the whales of gaming. Yeah. The guys with the big ass fucking wallets. <laughs> <laughs> Which I wish I was in the position. We all do. <laughs> I'm over here having to wait the 12 hours to open a lucky chest or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine waiting, bro. And praying I get the cards I need to upgrade my character. Because no one can spend fucking 50 bucks on straight up one go just for one fucking character. And I'm exactly. <laughs> unreal, dude. I'm all unreal and waiting for shit to come, right? Yes. Fucking, we got some big news that dropped literally this week, entirely this fucking week. For our game, of course, Destiny 2 got their Vidoc, which is very freaking exciting, dude. I know mm-hmm. we recently just watched it um, together. And I mean, you watched it separately, of course. And I, when you were watching it, I was watching it as well. Yeah. On my <laughs> end as well. So, man, I mean, fuck. It was beautiful lengthy. video. Beautiful Honestly, video, by the they way. They know how to hype up their community. They really do. Without a doubt. They're like, God damn it, dude. It's like, why do you guys got to do this every <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. It was it was a short Vidoc though, in my opinion. Most of the Vidocs usually tease even like other seasons that are coming mm-hmm. coming throughout the year. Yeah. But here they literally it was just 100 percent focused on Witch Queen alone. Because, well, from my opinion, I think this is just what we were all waiting for in an aspect. Like, what's going to happen with all of them after we killed uh, Oryx and in D1? You got me. There true. were just so many questions left unopened. <laughs> and on top of that, even throughout all of D2, we just kept hearing so much about Savathun. We had Savathun's song, like, oh, the witch all these queen, all these, all these strikes and little hints thrown in. You got me? So yeah. we knew this was the focus happening. Let, so alone, like they, yeah. let alone, like, even right now with what we are, it's always now, like, we're getting the idea of light and darkness we as light bearers can now hold the darkness and seeing even now that the darkness could still hold the light yeah which is a big aspect of what they touch on and not even just these past few seasons that we've been playing but even like the like, big hints literally they hinted at like you know like there there's so much other depth that it was like there's more than meets the eye that's the whole exactly. point of this yeah, it's like it's like they don't like we don't know nothing. Pretty much, yeah. that's what Sabathun is trying to tell us exactly. about this. Like, like you guys don't know the truth, like of what's happening around around you guys. <laughs> yeah, and that's still and it's true because <laughs> technically, I mean, if we say Osiris has been actually gone for so many times, and who we've been thinking we've been talking to is Osiris is not really Osiris. Yeah, like, you know, spoilers, you know, for you know, if you haven't caught up, you know, or living under a rock for Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even besides, like, the whole thing of them talking about the storyline and all that stuff, the actual video of just showing going back to Mars in some, in some missions, I want to say. Because mm-hmm. it looks back like the, the Destiny. It looks like that's the red. opener, like the opening mission by the right? looks of it. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we, that's the opener. And we still do see Anna Bray physically again. Last time we saw yeah, her like, was when she was on Mars. All these characters that we literally dealt with with the last like four or five seasons, dude, mm-hmm. they're all coming together on this point, which is like, goddamn, finally something like you Massive. get me like the consequences of what are what the seasons we did are coming together in this exactly. one expansion right now. And yeah. even the characters we talked about, the characters we've dealt with and stuff like like Keitel as well. She's coming, mm-hmm. dude. Like where she's gonna be a it sounds like like a big aspect of like the of season us. and the, yeah. the the story of helping us like fight against Sabathun. Exactly. Um but yeah, and one big thing too that they hit on is like I said earlier, the light being able to use the darkness and now the darkness using the light. They did mention something that like proving that we still are like humans just humans in general because there is that one part where the first time when we kill one of these 
Omegas, Zavathun's Omegas, or whatever the hell they're going to be called. I think they um, gave us the name. They're called the Lucent. The Lucent. Lucent. Yeah, that's what they are. Um, that th- these are the ones that are being able to use the light and our abilities against us. Like the dilemma of when you kill the first one and you have to hold their ghosts and you smash the ghosts. It's true. It's like, how do you feel like I have one of these? over my shoulder technically the entire time yeah it's like a moral thing right like exactly it's morally right like what why and how am i doing this like you mm-hmm. know the whole the whole thing on that yeah it's, so it's, it's like it's, <laughs> i mean i mean story-wise bro it's 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 getting juicy oh, this man. is literally it's gonna be a fucking juicer <laughs> yeah of a story for sure 100 percent. but minus the story dude right like the story is fucking is it's going places dude like this is what we've been wanting, right? Like yeah. the lore and all that stuff. We're actually gonna get it through missions and stuff like that. But I mean, Destiny 2, the community, we all know what we're really out for, right? It's the fucking loot, the schloot, dude. Come the schloot. <laughs> loot, dude. It's all about the fucking guns, the armor, the cosmetics, yes. bro. And rightfully so, dude. They're bringing some banger looking armor, dude. Not gonna lie. But yeah. It's like really cool looking armor and some of these exotic weapons just look insane in my opinion. Like for fuck's sake, like that worm launcher. Oh yeah. Worm that's grenade launcher. Crazy. And they even said there's another weapon that's a combination of touch of malice and another D one gun that we had before. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's no, that's the Austria Striga. Yeah, that's that's the SMG they're talking about. Oh, the SMG. You it's, got the, me, yeah. it's the thorn and a touch of malice, supposedly like a combination of both. Mm. No, so no, no, no. Like, it was Outbreak Prime. SMG. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's that. There's also the other Outbreak Prime that's now like for Hive specifically that it like sticks on them, and after a while they'll just detonate. That's what it's called. It's called Austrio Striga. No, it's a different one. It's the SMG. No, dude. Okay. I can tell you there. All right. We can fight okay. about this. Okay. <laughs> quest. Bro, we'll see on February 22nd. That's when that launches for sure. So people right. are aware of that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but even so then, and the fact that they're going back with how back in D1, we had those three swords, the arc, solar, and void ones. And now they're doing the same thing with the what's this new the glaives, glaives. The, the glaives, glaives. Yeah. the glaives. Yeah, they're doing the same thing. There was like the three different options, and I believe they said they were class specific. So they're so more like the even, Talalock and like Fabian strategy. Yeah, so it was the Ace of Spades, Spades pretty much. Yeah, so it's not so even it's like, that you could choose which one. It depends what just Titan, Warlock, or Hunter that you are. Is it's unfortunate, get. but at the same time, it, makes it really sense. is. It's cool that we're getting class specific guns though, again. So that yeah. means like this isn't the only time that's going to happen, most likely. And they might even introduce legendaries that are specific to classes. I actually liked class specific weapons and stuff like that because it really showed, like, since you're not showed, but it's cool because it makes you very focused on that one character. And then, like, since you're focused on that one character, they want to like reward you for playing on that character. You get me? Which I understand, you got me, but, and I'm not just talking about myself, obviously, but it is, I'm talking from my own opinion and my own playing. The only thing is like, yeah, if I had the time and if I had the energy, I would happily play as a hunter and as a Titan. But my time is sometimes so limited, let alone like it, Destiny 2 is not the only game I fully play. Mm -hmm. It's like... Okay, so now what? I can't fully concentrate on leveling up my warlock. Now I have to get carried by my friends to just get these weapons and then transfer them over to my warlock. You get get me? This is what I 100% noticed over the last two seasons, dude. Especially like going into Witch Queen. They're not catering to the casual players anymore. Yeah. They're like the people who only log in like... 10 hours a week if lucky they're not catering to those guys anymore i know so they real unfortunately yeah don't get me wrong it's very unfortunate but at the same time it's like destiny has, has such a large fan base and dedicated community that it's hard to please both you know both aisles right 
Yeah. So it's like they got to do something that's a little bit for both ends, right? So they're, they're going to be wrong. The level and system, them increasing it is actually going to, people don't realize that. Like that, that's going to give new light players or people who are returning that haven't played in a bit a reason to like, you know, grind out again. And stuff yes. like that. Of course, for like hardcore people, like for example, of myself, like leveling, the leveling system and stuff like that in Destiny isn't like the, the end game, you get me? It's yeah. like, that's not what we're like, we're going to hit it no matter what, you know, the, the, the light cap or whatever. But the thing is like, what comes after that? Yeah. That's what the R focus and like, what is there, is there replayability? You got me and stuff like that. So that goes into like their, the, them doing the whole um, two difficulties in the campaign, which is fucking fantastic in my opinion. I'm like, that's such a fucking great idea. We needed something like that from the get-go. Yeah. You got me? There's two sides of that. Oh, like I said, like there's the there's the classic campaign how they said it, which is a little bit more casual. You got me? It's like the campaign that we usually do. Like you know, you could kind of run through it by yourself, even if you wanted to as well, or make it easier with a group of three. Yeah. But the, how they are saying how legendary is like shaping out to be, it is definitely like supposed to be for the hardcore players, 100. percent I just. Yeah, I wish they did a little bit more for the like the casual players, right? Like yeah. people who only play a couple of hours here and there throughout the week, which I think they might because they haven't fully, fully, you know, uh, gave us the full details of what the season's gonna come or bring. You get me? So there might be other other aspects and other ways to like play or level up if you're only like if you only put a couple of hours each week, you know, of Destiny. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you got me like, yes, even the casual sometimes, sometimes get a little it slow. Like even for me, who I normally do keep up with the light levels for the most part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if there's like the little intermediate, like that in between from the hardcore, like even just adding that extra little step would be so freaking awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. I wish they did that, you know, but I mean, we don't know, right? Like we don't have the freaking thing in front of us yet so yeah until it comes out then that's when we could truly you know see and guess like what's coming and shit so um but moving on from that from destiny i know the hype is real for that shit there's so much stuff we're it. just hitting it on it on it lightly because if not, we could literally spend an entire episode just talking yeah. about oh, going dude. into detail I mean, about I, this. I did miss one thing, you know, a little teensy bit, right? We're getting a full fucking re- rework for our freaking voice up classes, which is a fucking oh, enormous, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's that where it's not going to be showing up like the how they do with the, 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 the fucking well, diamonds, whatever. <laughs> They're not showing up like that anymore. They're going to yeah. be the same gonna way, show up how they do for stasis. Currently. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, we're going to start seeing that one like stasis have its uh, aspects and different different ways to like um, your different loadouts. You got me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but bro, it's it's looking fucking crazy. They yeah. buffed and nerfed a bunch of stuff for the void subclasses, mostly buffs. Yeah, I, they, damn, bro. It's yeah. gonna be this. It's gonna be a warlock season, hundred percent, though. 100%. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll say I that just re, I read everything that the warlocks are getting, and I think I'm not saying Tynes got shafted. Hunters definitely got fucked. <laughs> they literally got shafted like crazy because they compared to the warlocks, dude. Yeah, they got screwed over hard. <laughs> Warlocks are getting are gonna be overpowered that void shit, dude. I'm Which I can't wait for. It. Like it's different. <laughs> definitely so. gonna put in my few hours at the beginning of the <laughs> season before we do get nerfed to the freaking ground that we become so useless as a uh, freaking Icora Ray. But anyways, <laughs> but yeah, they're definitely trying to have us focus more on the void subclass this season instead of having it like that weird. Eh, you could yes, we would have liked to push arc, but you could still do it on solar and void. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're definitely trying to have us focus on the void specifically, obviously to test out and see and get feedback on on how this is now gonna work. That way if they do move it for solar and uh arc, especially because they all work so differently, because yeah. 
like one said, with arc, you are just focused on getting those chain reactions because it is lightning. Solar is a little bit more heavy hitting. Um, and, and then full, so I think that's yeah, the whole. Healing. I think that's what they're going for, dude. I noticed that, right? Yeah. So, for, especially for of the void thing, how they're making it seem like the whole point of void is the big is massive big debuffs. Yeah, massive debuff. To like enemies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're focused on that. Now, solar is going to be like, you know, burning, of course. That's going to be a fucking, that's going to be the main stake of that. Yeah, burning, straight damage. And then healing, something related to the healing, yeah. healing yourself or healing yeah. your allies. Because that's what it really is. Yeah. When it, it comes really to is. those yeah. two subclasses, Arc is a little bit different, though. Because Arc, like you said, it's like chain lightning, but at the same time, how could you implement that as a is like a unified thing, right? Because the other two yeah. make sense, but arc is a little different though when it comes to that. So that's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out. That's well, the only one that, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, I guess that's why they're also trying just void because void is easy. Like you said, it's just straight debuffs for your opponents. So seeing how they could change that to add a little bit of a more debuff and and buff aspect to it when it comes to the whole void type of thing um seeing how that works first and then if they could slowly obviously i think the next logical step would be solar in my yeah because they already have the pretty open idea of of damage and then healing and then obviously the last one would be arc because arc would need that more paid attention to detail type of thing seeing how they want to uh bring it up to let's say a 3.0 because it technically is at a 2.0 right now it is 2.0 yeah unfortunately so having yeah, it arc, bring it up to 3.0 arc, in my opinion might be like the heavy hitter fucking supers dude if you it think kind about it, of you have is, like, yeah because you got like arc strider you have freaking not arc yeah arc strider which is like you know Technically speaking, if you have that with the Raiden's Flux, which is the chess piece for the Hunter, mm-hmm. you do massive damage to one single enemy. Yeah. The same thing with Thunder Crash. One big-ass enemy, one massive amount of damage. Same thing Come with Reach. So it's yeah. like, that's the only thing I could think of. But yeah. It's either, no. yeah, it's either big massive damage or it's more of like um, of an area control type of thing. Yeah, they can lean towards that as well. Because how when you smash with your with a Titan, it leaves that area pulsing with the arc. Yeah. You could control an area, a whole, like, let's say, hallway with a Warlock using his Chaos Rage, or even still then just staying in that specific area with um, the regular... This just t- shows how much I don't play arc... Um, like it's regular chain lightning type of thing. Oh, Same the, thing with the, Hunter. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, the lightning hand thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's weird. It's like a heavy hitting area control type of thing. So it could be focused on just add a clear, like lightning chain. Add clear is another one. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, but that would be unfortunate because it would miss because of one subclass, because of Arc Strider, unfortunately. You can't, it will be a huge nerf to like the Titans and Warlocks. You got That's me. true. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely interesting it's to see which yeah. way they're leaning, especially now with the added support from Sony. Yeah, dude, Def- they got definitely. The piggy bank. <laughs> uh huh. Exactly. They have more resources to go off of. So, mm. yeah. We'll as see. long as they don't make it just PlayStation exclusives, we're fine. We're, we're fine. fine. They're chilling. They are chilling, dude. <laughs> oh man you know talking about Sony and stuff like that talk about big companies bullying into the movies actually <laughs> um, well yeah we'll lean into this movie first that we got word another trailer for a uh, fucking Disney movie on or Disney Disney's killing it man I feel yes, like really movies is. bro They've been like just fucking monsters when it comes to the movie scene lately. They've been having better luck with their own like movies and stuff than Netflix has been able to with all of it with all of its transitions. That's true. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yes, I get slacking. it. I get it. Like Disney does have a big piggy bank, like we said before. <laughs> 
But technically, like Netflix has gotten up there. Netflix has its resources. Netflix has its Thank good you. amount to dump on a lot of these projects, but they're very hit or miss. Like we've said the before, movies, in a lot of projects. Yeah, not even I mean, just the movies, like the, the shows, shows, like even Cowboy I mean, Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the example. Cowboy Bebop was a big flop. It yeah, was not a bop. On their end. Yeah, that was a, a huge miss, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but and we're talking about the trailer. I mean, we kind of skewed off there a little bit. Yeah, a little. We're bit. talking about the they released a the trailer for the Buzz Lightyear. Um, Lightyear movie. Lightyear. It's about <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Come on, Buzz Lightyear. that's why. That's what I meant. It's called Lightyear. Yeah, it's like his and origin dude, stories. Yeah. It, yeah, dude, I was gonna say the graphics for this movie look fucking amazing. And it really does. Bro. It looks really cool. I'm like, it's wow, much, dude. I, I believe it's like different than what we've seen for a lot of recent Disney movies. Yeah, I'm like, holy shit, bro. Yeah, like, this looks uh, actually really fucking good, dude. Animation. Yeah, it really does. And even still, like from what we've seen in the little bit of the trailer, it seems like it's going to be a good storyline that they're going with. Very enough um, comedic relief thrown in throughout the entire film. Like, especially with uh, Lightyear's new sidekick that he's going to be having, Buzz's sidekick, the cat, that toy cat thing. Yeah. It's definitely going to be interesting, especially when we know buzz already from all of his toy story films seeing yeah. if they connect anything that we already know like we are kind of have well i kind of have an idea of who our main antagonist is gonna be throughout the film yeah um but yeah that because he is a space ranger so seeing what type of different aliens or or extraterrestrial creatures he comes about with it's definitely going to be interesting to see. Yeah. And this movie's supposed to launch in what, June? In June. It specific- yeah, it just says June 2022. Says June no set date. Yeah. That's well, up. I mean, that's going to be something to look at. Most likely it's coming on Disney Plus. It's not a theater movie, I think. Yeah, definitely. I don't think this one is. Yeah, but definitely, definitely looking forward to it. And I think about I, the whole thing that you were saying about if they're going to relate to the Toy Story movies. I don't think so. Because it wouldn't make sense if you think about it, though. Well, no, they'll, they'll probably well, they'll probably show like Easter eggs, be like, oh, you know, little things here and there. But I'm saying, like, in the aspect of, okay, when we meet Buzz, we he he genuinely believes he is this space ranger that he genuinely believes he is not a toy. You get me? Yeah. Right. So I'm saying, okay, if he knows what his backstory is. We got bits and pieces of that throughout the films. Yeah. Well, Not just that he's a toy. Show? There wasn't there a Buzz Lightyear show, too? I, I don't know if there was a show, but I'm saying... There, like, there was definitely a show. Oh. It was 100% a show. But I'm so saying, I'm like, like we're, in, in Toy Story 2, we, we got that thing, I believe, where Zod was, like, his father or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, do we see do the we whole see Star like Wars that? thing? Yeah. So, I mean, we technically see a couple of creatures that look like it could be Zod. And there is like a, a, a silhouette of another character that also looks like it could be Zod. Dude, so if it is, if I, if I, am I saying it right? Zod? I feel like that's the Superman antagonist. Zog. Zog. <laughs> but yeah, you get yeah, me? Yeah. So if it's the... Yeah, Zod is the General Zod. Right, General Zod is <laughs> Zod. mixing my characters up now. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. Dude, seeing... I mean, it would make sense because that's his technically his mortal enemy, whatever. Throughout in the movies, right? Like, so that's what I'm so. saying. Like, if are they gonna connect that to his origin story? Because from the actual Toy Story film, that is what we're getting the idea of. That is his origin story. I mean, that's that makes sense because I mean. The story's already there for them. This is just like an update showing them from like, this is his humble beginning, right? Type yeah, of speaking, type that's of what I'm saying. Yeah, so. so It'd be cool to see all those that connections would be cool to come see to. Him. Yeah, make him badass looking and shit. Yeah. A little bit badass looking. Not, and, know, they, and, they end it, and they end it with his ship, his ship malfunctioning and him landing on Earth. Oh no, dude. <laughs> no. Where he comes in contact with the Woody <laughs> and all the game. <laughs> oh no. They put him in hyper sleep. Hyper sleep. <laughs> oh god, that'd be so good. I was like, oh fuck. No, dude. 
It's crazy. That would that would blow me away. Like, yeah. I can't believe they did that. Oh god. I'm calling it now. We've been making a whole bunch of close calls that well, we're getting person. good, yo. Yeah. <laughs> what are these calls, bro? We'll talk we'll talk about one of those calls in one of these next few articles too. So Yeah. You know, I mean talking about predictions and shit, you know. Um, uh, I mean, this next article is literally just all predictions at this point, bro, of what's gonna come for season two of Invincible. Yes. So, dude, I mean, talk about fucking crazy ass animes, right? Like anime oh, yeah. shows, animated shows. Dude, this show is ridiculous, bro. Just, I know people literally, I know I've seen videos upon videos of people's reactions on like, or I've seen the show myself and it's fucking nuts. It's the most not violent fucking anime I've ever seen. It, yeah, it is not. It does not compare to like what we see from like DC shows or like kind of we kind of see this. I'm sorry. We can't not. We don't see this in Marvel shows. We kind of see it in DC shows because DC shows are very dark some of the times, depending yeah, on what storyline they're portraying. But this, but this is, yeah, it's very gruesome. It's very adult um, rated R type of stuff. Not not really for a kid <laughs> to watch. No, definitely not. That's why it's very an Amazon exclusive <laughs> show. For a reason. <laughs> It is super fucking violent. It was so bloody. I'm like, holy crap. Dude. Yeah. Especially that last like two episodes of Omni Man and this invincible fucking yeah. fight. That is just that is top tier animation at its finest. They show the detail of everything that happens too. Like, because it's more grounded. Yeah. It's, the whole show is literally based like, what if superheroes actually existed in real life? Yeah. Like, they show actual fucking physics, right? Mm-hmm. Like the whole nonsense of, for example, of Superman catching someone that's falling off a fucking a building. That person would instantly die. Like the second he fucking grabbed them. Oh, yeah. Stopped flying. Yeah. Because their bones and everything were crushed because of the pressure. The you know, pressure and the gravity and, and all that. Yeah. And yeah. the momentum. Like it would instantly kill them. Yeah. The fucking aortas would literally collapse upon themselves. Dude, it's fucking ridiculous, dude. Yeah. But this shows this. Like this shows like they do that and it actually fucking kills the people when they try to save them sometimes. Yeah. It work. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we got... So, season two and even season three were greenlit. Um, and they were already... We already got some sort of announcements and stuff about them, but we won't be seeing anything really arrive until either 2023 or possibly even like close to 2024. Yeah. But the fact that it's like the whole, the first season was so popular. It did so well. Um, it's a great storytelling in all sense of the form um, in all sense of the word. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's just so cool, like, and so exciting to have season two already, like, just, like, just waiting like, yeah. for it to come out. Right. So much so that so much of even the voice actors from season one have already signed on to be there for the next few seasons as well. Like we said, Stephen Yun as our main character, Mark Grayson, uh, Seth Rogen as Alan the Alien, who we didn't meet until like the last few um the last few episodes uh sandra oh like it's just so jk simmons like all of these guys are ready and super excited as they say anyways to be signed up for season two um and i mean we were left with a big cliffhanger in the original season anyways with omni-man not killing Invincible and then just shooting back off to space. So now the storyline could go anywhere. The the whole it's so vague. Um, yeah, kind of Omni Man's home planet. If it invades, um, did Omni Man have a change of heart? Does he come back? Does he go and kill his own planet before that? Or is it going to be one of those things like the first half is like Omni Man fighting with like inner turmoil? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that, like, like fuck, am I doing like this? Is my actual, you know, flesh and blood, 
and stuff. And he actually made me feel something for the first time in fucking centuries of him. Yeah, because living, technically, you know? like he said, uh, Invincible's mom was technically just a pet for him in season one. If you haven't watched it, definitely go watch it before you keep listening to this. Oh, yeah. Like, because there's we're ruining so the shit much. It. There is so much to watch for such a small season that are so quick in episodes. They fit in so much, but it flows so well. Um, this is one of those shows that I definitely give a, a chef's kiss to because it is so good. <laughs> <laughs> chef's kiss, dude. Chef's kiss. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 so exciting. I can't like one thing, one minor detail. I don't know if you paid attention to it. That how from the first episode when they do his intro card of Invincible to the last one, just how bloodier and bloodier uh, the word just gets and darker the atmosphere of the word Invincible shows up on the title screen. Yeah, when the show goes on, like that's like such a big thing. Just showing the progression from the episode one to the final episode. Like, it's so good. Dude, I just... They, they did such an amazing job up to the point where, like, they, not, like you said, like, they didn't even... Not only is the second season, like, confirmed, they're like, yeah, we're already working on, like, there's a season three coming up. Don't worry yeah. about it. Like, they're that confident that season two is going to be that fucking good. <laughs> season three's already fucking yeah. got relit as well. Well, that's Bezos for you. Bezos is confident in everything he does. <laughs> Yo, seriously, peaking confidence, bro. Jesus for real. Christ, dude. I mean, if you, I mean, it is a good show. So I don't. No, it's, I don't it's doubt a great it, show. I do not doubt like it will do well. It won't do well. Sorry. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, wait, that's going against everything we just I know, said. I know. That's my bad. <laughs> I literally said it backwards there. That's, a, that's my bad. <laughs> And you know, for things going into this last segment, and about things going well, in my opinion, right? Very well. Yeah, dude. So this is this is huge for me because I'm a huge, huge fan of this movie series in particular. And like up to the point where my dad used to like he watches it with me and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and I'm talking about specifically about Jurassic Park. And before the- hold on, before we go any further into this. Watch the trailer because we're just gonna oh, rip yeah, into gonna this trailer right now. It. Like, yeah, normally we, we would in. save the spot for Destiny. We wanted to save it for Jurassic Park Dominion specifically right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the full full trailer, trailer number one of yeah Jurassic World Dominion. Oh man, it is so good. The graphics look nice. The story, I don't know where we're going off here. Like, yeah. Honestly. So the story is ambiguous at this point, in my opinion. Which is um, good. Which is good. Which because is good, a yeah. lot of the times during trailers, they just spoil, spoil so about. much of it. Like the antagonist or like the... They, they, the, they already spoiled me. So. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm saying like it, it's... That's normally such a bad thing because wasn't that even the whole thing with... Um, Batman versus Superman or even like the the Justice League movies, the trailers just spoiled so much. They had to go back and rework so much of it. So it became a different type of storyline. So the fact that obviously, especially with with dinosaurs, there's not really much like dialogue (laughs) between you and a dinosaur that you could really tell where the storyline is going to go. But yeah, like I'm saying, like this, this trailer was very very good straight from the beginning like you see where the where the world is at right now and kind of like where it's leading to in in the few scenes that we do see so Mm -hmm. actually seeing how it um resolves at the end is really kept the mystery if you really think about it like yeah dude Dude, I think the one thing that just gets me hyped so much about this dude is just seeing the original characters come back like which we called which, which we, we did call, call we did like call. two weeks like two, ago episodes. i believe yeah we, we, we said really it'd be it. so cool if they bring back even the original cast or even just just jeff goldblum 
And the I fact that it. they brought all three all of them three? back, I was that like, we see, no that we see. We don't even know if yeah. they bring in any more. The two kids or anything like that. The main old professor, if he's still alive. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think he is. I don't Actually, know. But, I rest his soul, but... <laughs> But still, like seeing like the kid, yeah. See, it'd be cool seeing the kids grown up again and like, yeah, dude, fuck, dude. It is just, I saw that dude. I was like, no way. They actually fucking did it, dude. It's they so actually, good. So I'm just like, holy shit, bro. Like one, I was like, dude, we fucking called it. Oh, that's the, the first thing that really <laughs> up my head. I'm like, God damn, we actually fucking called it. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and we said it too. Like, yo, that's all they need. If this is going to be the last Jurassic movie, we said it last time too. Like we, they got to go home. They got to go big. You know, if they're going to go oh, fucking home with the series, bro. And the fact that they say the iconic line of nobody move. Nobody move. (laughs) And it's Chris Pratt and they both say it at the same time. (laughs) It was just so funny because he even looks at Chris like, that's my line. That's my line. Bro, I was like, Uh, no fucking way, dude. Dude, it's just there's so much hype for this shit. At it's, least in my opinion. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, a hundred percent. The the I'm Jurassic excited, bro. the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World fan base. It's not really known about, but it's there and it is big. Dude, it's funny because I was reading some of the comments for this uh-huh. for the actual thing. They're like, "There's no way they actually brought the OGs back." Dude. <laughs> yeah. That was literally the first thing I read. I'm like, "Yo." And then, like, the second one was like, damn, how much money did they fucking give out that they brought the OGs back to? Yeah, normally, <laughs> just, true, normally just Jeff Goldblum is so much not to have the whole, the whole, uh, the whole group back together. Yeah, dude, the whole crew, bro. Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, my God. I showed my dad. My dad's like, oh, shit. Yo, ya está viejo. My dad was like, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, the the guy and the the lady is like, oh, si se mira buena. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, he was he's like he was excited. He was actually excited. He's like, oh, that looks actually really good. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. Because <laughs> the it's just so cool. Like I, I I really can't wait for this film as well. Yeah, dude, it's like uh, being excited for like Marvel movies. <laughs> yeah, my equivalent to that almost. <laughs> Not Endgame excited because that's a whole different level. Oh right? yeah, like, no, Endgame is is a whole. But this spectrum. is this is the Endgame level for Jurassic Park. Am I yes. <laughs> bringing yes. everything together? hundred, dude. You even get the same the the scientist that literally cr- started creating the fucking dinosaurs back in the first original uh, Jurassic yeah. Park as well. Yeah, I'm like, no way, dude. They even brought this dude back. Holy shit! I mean, he was he's in every single Jurassic Park. I think that uh the Asian professor. Oh, fuck. I think so. Not professor, a scientist, whatever. Scientist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's literally in almost every single one, I think. Is he? Wow. Because I know he, he came out in the first one. He came out in the... No, he didn't come on the third one. He came out in the he first one. He probably did, but it was very, like, quickly or very subtle. You got me? He's trying probably, to... Yeah. They he's mentioned trying to his name his... for sure in the second one. <laughs> oh, probably. Let me see. And then... um. He was not in the third one. I could tell you that right now because that's probably that was my favorite one, even though probably people hate that one. <laughs> um, he was definitely in Jurassic World, hundred percent, and he was in uh, Jurassic World. Uh, what is it called? The second one, Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, he's trying to pull his Stan Lee moves on on us on this, up. but like, I'm, an, I'm an Easter egg guy. <laughs> he'll be he'll he'll the Easter egg, but he won't live up to it. No one could, no one could pull what Stanley did for his entire kingdom. No, That's Stanley's not, kingdom. <laughs> no, he literally came out in like what 25 different fucking movies that's i think so yeah and on top of that that's not including like animated shows or series Mm -hmm. that he voiced in either yeah bro man man was a legend but yeah back to jurassic world it's so good it's so good dude if we go watch it we definitely have to wear jurassic park shirts oh i have my jurassic park shirt don't worry i already got one i know i need to get one one. i need to get one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or at least update the one I had. Look, it's yeah, old. I'll definitely go with that shirt without a doubt. Oh yeah, you know people are gonna be pulling out like every Woo! sort of like dinosaur memento they had. <laughs> yeah, Coming with claws and everything. The little, there the little go. stick that you press the handle at the bottom yeah. and the mouth closes. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, that was funny, dude. That, but uh, yeah, exciting things are coming, dude. 
Honestly, Super all exciting. good news, bro. Like we said, like in the beginning, literally just literally nothing but fucking fantastic news this week. A hundred percent. I mean, there probably was some bad news, but I mean, trying to avoid it for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's already yeah, a lot of bad news. That you yeah, there's the news. But I mean, that's the whole point of us doing this, keeping positive, just looking on the positive things and hopefully entertaining somebody out there. Oh, in yeah. one way or another that it's entertaining people 100 <laughs> percent. just our transitions yeah, our alone are, are iconic yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But yeah so i mean that's everything i have man i don't know if you got any extra little sneaky stories snuck in there no, I didn't. I mean, besides the fact that I got my new phone a couple of days ago and just got it fixed right now before recording this. What is it? 13, the 13, 13 Pro Max Pro. I got the biggest one. I said one that they backwards. Yes. I said Max Pro. It is Max Pro. Oh, I said Pro Max. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I said. I mean, it might be Pro Max. I'm just calling it Max Pro because that's just what rolls off of my tongue easily. But <laughs> it's easier that way. Fuck it. Right? <laughs> But yes, uh, besides that, so Leche, where can people find you? You can find me at um, an Instagram at Leche Minuesa. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know why I struggle with that. Um, or you guys can find me at Twitch at Technofreak95. And how about you, dude? And then people can find me on Instagram at One Alpha Penguin, and also find me on Twitch.tv slash One Alpha Penguin. Then you guys can follow the podcast on Instagram at take a sip underscore pod and even on our YouTube channel where we upload these episodes every week and are trying to post some other fun content on there as well. So that is youtube.com forward slash take a sip. As always, the logos are the same throughout all the social medias um, and even on the YouTube channel. There's all the links to all of our stuff as well that you guys could always like and follow, subscribe, leave comments on how we could get better. We love hearing your guys' opinions. Um, and we're trying things out even as well with the Instagram, seeing how those work and all. But besides that, thank you guys so much for listening. We highly appreciate it. And we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. See you guys.